Hi guys, today I'm going to be doing rear brake rotors and brake pads. Uh, so, I'm going to first introduce all the tools that I'm going to be using. A rubber mallet to knock loose the rotor knock, and knock loose all the rust holding all the screws together. A 6mm Allen head for the rotor retaining screw. An 8mm Allen head for the caliper guide bolts. This red tube would be my breaker bar for these Allen keys since I don't have an Allen socket. Uh, I would have a 16 millimeter socket for the caliper uh, holder retainer. A 17 millimeter socket that's for just breaking loose the wheel bolts. A wire brush. This is a 3 8 inch ratchet with um, suitable Torx heads to substitute for the Allen sockets I don't have. That's your tightening and torquing everything. It's kind of low torque, so torques will work fine. Uh, this is a bigger half-inch drive ratchet. My torque sockets. Uh, that's a half-inch breaker bar. Uh, that various extensions. Um, these are just center punches just to hit the rotor retaining bolt. And that's to just knock loose the rust. Old flathead screwdriver just for prying um, bungee cord to support the caliper 6 inch C clamp to contract the piston uh, brake clean uh, brake disquiet and brake grease to lube up everything and that's a uh, shop towels and This, these are my parts centric uh, Centric rotors part number would be uh, 123.34054. Uh, this stuff right here, these are my spare rotor retaining screws. I probably will strip mine out or just make them unusable. And Mintex Extreme pads, these were included in my with the purchase of my car. So let's get to it. So first things so first things first, I'm gonna get my gloves on. And the first step you would do is remove your caliper retainer, which would be to take your flathead, pry forwards, and then out, like so. Like so. Next what you would do is take your 8mm Allen head and undo the bolts in the back. I'm just, I pre loosen oh, I pre loosened mine so you don't have to do much. But first things first, there are two uh, dust boots that you must remove. This is one of them, and the other one has fallen off. And there's the second one. There you go. You will take that, insert it to the right place, and unbolt them. And voila! There you go. These are my original pads. They're not completely gone, but they're getting low. And what now is, I you saw the bungee cord, I'm just hooking my bungee it's through the caliper and just letting it hang, like so. Alright, now to the next step, remove this bracket. You will take your 16 millimeter socket and there are two bolts back here. Okay, so I've placed these screws again, and well, my bracket's loose. Just loosening it by hand. Sorry if I'm in the way. There's one bolt, 16 millimeter. And here will be the second bolt. Second bolt and my caliper. 
for a retainer. Bracket. Alright, of course clean all these parts with brake cleaner, but I'm not going to do that right now. Your next step would be to take off this rotor itself. Now this rotor retaining bolt I've loosened already. J just to save time in this video. There you go. I will not be reusing this because I have two new ones. And now you must hit your rotor with the rubber mallet until it breaks loose. Okay, okay. So many, many, many hammer blows later, I t actually took out a five pound sledge and I just hit the back of the rotor many times. It finally broke loose. It was rusted on there very, very tight. So at this point, what I'm going to do is take my wire brush and just scrub along here until all the rust is gone. And then I will take my CRC synthetic caliper brake grease, this stuff, coat the hub. And this time I'm going to make sure that uh, my rotor will not get seized on again. So there is the new uh, rotor on it. Sorry, I didn't get a in-process video. What I just did was clean it off. Like I said, I used some brake cleaner also. This stuff. Um, you're also supposed to use brake cleaner on the rotor surface itself. Just get off that rust-proof coating that the factory puts on it. Uh, I put some of that brake grease. It acts like anti-seize. Doesn't wash out also, so that's a plus. Put it all over the wheel hub and then slipped it on. Uh, I also put a little bit of that brake grease on the rotor retaining screw itself. Not the threads, but the outer part. You'll see once you actually get to that part yourself. And well, now all I have to do is torque it. Torque values. I have a little cheat sheet. Uh, rotor retaining screws, you need 16 newton meters or 12 foot pounds. Um, here is my cheat sheet. Once that focuses, yeah, you guys will be able to see all the other car caliper carrier. That's 48 pounds, foot pounds. Caliper guide bolts, that's 22 foot pounds. And the wheel bolts are 89 foot pounds. So now that my rotor is on, caliper carrier is on, I will start showing you guys how to prep this as soon as I find a good place for it to stay. Okay. What you want to do is leave the inner brake pad in and take your 6 inch C clamp. I'm going to loosen it all the way until I can wrap it around my caliper. And slowly, and slowly, it will compress in. Check your brake fluid reservoir as you compress to see if it's overflowing or not. Alright, so it's completely in for me. Next up is to remove your caliper guide pins and clean them out with brake clean. As you can see, they're very dirty. They just slip out. And well, all this black stuff, which is road grime, you want to remove. BMW TIS says to not grease them before you put them back in. Clean it with brake clean. Simple. So here are all four of my pads. Uh, they are coated with brake squeal grease. Right there. Coated all the ears also because that's what you're supposed to do. And this is my original pad. That's how much was left. If you compare them, as you can see, missing a lot of material that's why you have to compress the piston and well I'm just gonna go back on 
And this one with the clip goes back onto the piston, and this one goes on the outside. Alright, just stay tuned, and you'll see it. I accidentally skipped a step, but uh, what you do is take those ears that I posted earlier, and you just push it into the piston. You will see it, what happens when you actually get to this step. It's actually very straightforward. And now I'm going to get the other pad and put it on. As you can see, there are little red spots on the caliper bracket. That's where BMW tells you to also uh, put on, put some brake quiet so you don't get any squeal. Here's the other pad. Well. goes along right in here, fits in, the ears go on like that, very straightforward. Now you just take the whole caliper, and you slide it over. Basically, it. Now I'm gonna take off my gloves, keep yep, and take my clean hands, get them all dirty. I'm gonna take my caliper uh, guide bolts, slip them into the back. Okay, so after fussing, I tightened the bolts. 22 foot pounds for the caliper guide bolts. At this point, you're basically done. You must. Place your two uh, dust cap covers. They just pop right into place, like so. That one's in. They're both in. Just double checking. And now your hood or retaining. Uh, you do what you do is I actually do it a little differently, but uh, what you do is put the two wings, this and this wing, onto the brake caliper, and then you're supposed to push in. Except I always have trouble doing this stuff, so I just do it my own modified way, and it still works. Clips are on, ta-da, your whole thing's done. Remove your bungee, torque up your wheels, 89 foot pounds, and you're done. Thanks for watching. Okay, so here is the sensor. It clips onto your rear brake pad. Uh, like so. Where I you have this little gap and it goes on right there like that the connectors for it are back here behind your uh, fender liner and there is a plastic nut right there where my finger is and that's how you undo it and just pull it out all right since i don't since i didn't set off my sensor it's good to go and i will just replace it once i get the rest of my brakes done.